Okay, so let's talk about making normals from ones that you paint inside of here, making them work correctly with the other materials you may put on. There's a couple ways to do it. One is the hacky way that we came up with um, years ago before they came up with the new way of doing it, and it's the incorrect way, and it's not as perfect, and it has some issues. But let's just go over that real quick because it's super fast. And then I'll go over the other way in this one as well. I also want to go over a little bit about what normals do and how they are calculated and how to fix them if they come out incorrectly. So what you need to do is I've done all these painting of normals. I'm going to hide everything here like this. And, and I just want to export out and get the information from these normals because if we look at how the metal works, for example, it's not really paying attention to what these normals are saying. Like there's no creation of a rust around the base of the screw or the nut or anything like that. So let's just figure out how to get that to work correctly. I'm going to close these down and just get this. I just want this normal. I don't want the information from the wood or from the other grime and stuff. I just want the simple normals that I painted in by hand. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say export. With that thing selected, with nothing but that selected, I'm going to come to export and I'm going to say export it in the proper folder. And then I'm going to tell it to go to, well for me, I just put it into a material called normals only. And to do this, you can come into your own setup and make your own for this. Uh, we went over this in a different video, but to make your own, it's pretty simple. Just delete what you don't want, add what you do want, and go for it. So I'm going to export this out with this selected and the normals only and all that stuff. And then I'm going to come back into my uh, Substance Painter, and I'm going to go ahead and turn these off. All right, and then I'm going to open up my shelf. So I'll take my shelf, bring it right here, and I'm going to go back and find wherever I dropped that normal, which was right here. And I'm going to drag it into my shelf, and you'll see that it says unidentified. I'm going to change it to a texture, just like we always do when we drop stuff in here. We have to make sure we tell it what it is. And now I've got this normal that I've made. Uh, so what we're going to do is go to the baking area, and I'm going to get rid of all my maps real quick, like that. And then I'm going to drop my normal that I just made and put it into this right here. And let's take a look at it. And automatically, it works, right? It's it's working, but it looks like it's working wrong. And that's what I want to talk to you about inside of, sub, inside of uh, Photoshop, just to show you what's going on here. I exported this in the wrong way, um, almost on purpose. So if I open this back up in Photoshop, we'll take a look at it. And let's look at what these channels each do, because each channel tells the computer which way the light to start would look like. So basically, we're saying, hey, computer, in the red channel, if the light was to the right, coming in, casting down on this, it would cast the highlights in this area, and it would cast the, the shadows in this area. So now that the computer has that information, it's able to calculate the rest of the information. And if you look at the green channel, it's from the bottom, and then it's shadowed from the top because the light is coming from the bottom. So basically from this one, it's from the right, and this one, it's from the bottom. And then blue, blue is always forward and back, so this one never has a problem. It's usually green. I um, mean, it's green because different ways of calculating normals and engines use light at the bottom or light at the uh, at the top. You know, just that's all it is. So how do we fix this problem if the light is showing from the bottom? All we have to do is control I to invert the texture in the green channel. Watch, control I, bam. Now, now it even feels like it's coming from the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this over the old one. And then of course I have to re-import it back into Substance. So I'll go back and open up my channels here. And I'm gonna have to drag it back in. It's gonna ask me the same questions again. And the textures are gonna be here. And then I'm gonna go current section and open. And now I'm gonna go ahead back to my baking and drop this version into here. And lo and behold, everything is working correctly. It just depends on where the light is being told to start. Um, for the computer to make sense of what it's seeing. Okay, so they're working. Uh, I do need to do one more thing. I realized I got rid of my ID map. I don't want to get rid of that because it's the way I was texturing. So I'm just going to go ahead back into my project um, inside of my shelf and open this back up and drag my ID that I already made back into here. So I have my ID set up. Now I'm going to bake. When we have both of those turned off, our normal and our ID, and then we rebake, it's going to use the normal and ignore the ID uh, and make all the other maps correct. But there's one more thing I've got to make sure that I don't have 
the secondary high res version or my, even my ID map version in here because it will overwrite what the normal does after that point. So I'm going to go ahead and say bake mesh maps from those three with nothing but itself inside of there. And what we get, as you can start to see, is information in our other maps. Our curvature map doesn't have much because there's not much to the curve. So there you go. We got our maps. We can look at them. And if you really wanted to, you could go back in and edit the these maps and make them a little bit more dramatic and whatever you want inside of Photoshop or something like that. But that's the way we hacked it together. Now if I turn this back on here, you'll see that I'm getting a little bit more information based off of, and it's not a lot, but based off of the map. Now I also have it really low and this is a pretty small uh, texture put all on one piece. There's not a lot of tiling so you're going to get this pixelization. Allegra Rhythmic or Adobe now uh, changed the way this was done in 2017. They fixed it so we can do it inside the program never having to leave. So let's take a look at that right now. To do that I'll need to reset it. So I'm going to come back into my uh, map baking and turn everything off. I'll leave the ID again so I don't have to rebake the ID. And I'll just bake mesh maps. As default, there's no normal on, and I'll just say bake. Oh, we'll get the normal out of here too. So we have everything but ID turned on, we're going to bake. And there we go, flat and generic. Okay, so we've got our flat generic environment, and we're going to turn our normals back on. And the way it was designed is that you don't even have to leave the program to get it to work. So to get this to work, to what we need to do is go and turn on our normals like I have right there and then come in here and add what's called an anchor point on it. And what an anchor point is, is it tells the program it's something that basically, if you're thinking code, it's like a hook. It means that I can point to this hook and anything can be referred to this anchor point. That way it can be made to work with other aspects of the mapping. So I've made an anchor point. I've called it normals. If you want, you can rename it anything you want. I'm just, it'll default to the name of the layer. So I'm going to come back up to support material and I'm going to take a look. And inside of the support material, I have two things going on inside of the mask. I have the paint layer and then I have the rust. The rust is really the one I want. So I'm going to take a look at this rust and I'm going to say, okay, in the rust I have a generator, a mask editor, and then I have a generator that's a dripping. What you'll see is that only the mask editor has this option. This is made to be put over the top of other things. So usually it's a rust or a, a, a feed through or something. So it's the mask editor generator. And if you don't know how to make that, that's in a different video. But basically it's just come in here and say add generator, change it to the mask and you're set. Okay, you could even make a custom one just for this. But I'm gonna use the one that's already here. So I'm gonna take this one right here and then I'm going to come down and you can see right here this micro details might be closed. If you open it up you get some things called micro height and micro normal. Okay cool. Then there's this also this input image input section here too and it shows you a bunch of different information about the images but one of the images down here is the micro normal. Well micro normal is actually where we're going to attach our hook to or anchor to. So I'm going to click on this and then it's going to say resources and that's normally where you pick your normal out but we're going to actually say anchor point. Now I do want to point out that anchor point will only be highlighted or clickable if the anchor is below. So let me show you what I mean. If I take this and put this above support material and then I come back to that option you'll see that I can click on here and now it's grayed out because it has to be below. So I'm going to take this anchor again and just usually it's the best practice just to throw at the bottom and if you want to do this this does give you the ability to do this in separate pieces so you don't have to do the whole object at once but we just have it set up as one object. So I'm going to come back to here and I'm going to go to back micro normal and again this is only in the generator mask editor okay so micro normal and then the anchor points now active I can click on that and say anchor normals and I clicked on it and nothing happened so what's going on well there's a couple things we have to do first first off we have to tell it to use what channel we want in this layer and obviously we wanted to use the normal channel so there we go now it should work no and then we have to have one more step and that last step is turn on the micro normal option here so if we click that button now we'll get the information. And as you can see, the information is actually much better than when you bake it the hacky way. Uh, so really, this is the way you should do it. 
but for our purposes, since it's the first time you've used it, you can just drop it in for the 2D side of it and put it in this way. But that's basically how you do it, and it always has to be a an, a generator, and it has to be a masked editor, mask editor. But besides that, wherever you paint your normals, put it at the bottom and attach them to where they need to go. That's it, and that's how you would do it 